Hi friends, uh, in the last video we did create a very simple um, <coughs> bot with dialog flow and we also deployed it in a, in a web interface and we were able to see how bots are getting created in a predefined framework. So dialog flow basically is a acquisition by Google and similarly Microsoft and uh, Amazon, they have their own frameworks. The advantages of these frameworks are, uh, it is easy, it is easier to create a bot, you need not worry about the technology part of it, you need not worry about the algorithms working in behind it, you need not even worry about a uh, lot of training those algorithms, right? And it all comes with the out-of-box integration, so if you want to integrate it with Facebook, you want to integrate it with Twitter or Slack or any of your websites, it gives you a lot of uh, user-friendly interfaces to do it. However, uh, whether we need to go for such uh, frameworks or should we do it something on our own, when I say on our own, like an open source, uh, the one which we are going to talk about is uh, RASA framework, RASA. Uh, which ex exclusively or extensively makes use of uh, Python, right? Uh, what is the pros and cons of it? As I said, it depends upon what type of bot you want to create. If you have a, a website wherein a lot of FAQs are there and you just wanted it to have a bot there, which is not very critical, it doesn't save any critical data, then I will uh, say uh, I will recommend go with this one of this framework. It's much easier. You need not uh, uh, be so much dependent on your development team. Create a project for it. It can be done pretty easily and quickly as well, right? But if you have some of your data in it and you want to have a fullest control of your data and you want to have some customization, uh, especially if you want to do a domain-specific training on this machine learning algorithms to learn your specific business or you are the way you want to the algorithm to learn certain terminologies which are very unique to your business or domain then i would recommend go with this type of a, a framework which will help you to develop on your own but having said that it also comes with its own disadvantages uh, one as, uh, you need to know a little bit of technology and more than the technology setting up the environment uh, setting up all the packages and creating uh, the test environment that's going to take a little bit of time so technology is involved number one number two this framework doesn't come with an out-of-box integration like to integrate with facebook or slack it is still possible but you need to write some interfacing code well, the advantage here is the data resides with you, uh, whether it is in your private cloud or on the you know, on your hard disk, which is there within the four walls of your enterprise. The data is maintained there, and you want to train the algorithms. Yes, absolutely, you can do it. So you need to weigh the pros and cons and decide based on the use case which you have selected. So there is no uh, one size fit all, right? So having said that, uh, there are certain things which are common, whether you use a, a framework like a dialogue flow or you are going to use a RASA framework where you have to do most of the things on your own. The terminology is like what we described as an intent. That is the same. Entity, it is the same. So that's the reason we started with dialogue flow so that you get familiar with it. So intent is nothing but your intention and uh, entity is nothing but which will modify the intent so let me give you an example so that it will have a quick recap uh, if you say uh, i want to order a cappuccino right now here ordering is that intent and uh, cappuccino is the entity right uh, what is the weather in chennai so again here inquiry is the intent and the chennai becomes an entity correct so uh, when any framework which you take has to understand your intent and also moderate the dialogue. Uh, let's get little deeper. So if you take RASA framework, it has two components to it. One is RASA NLU, which is nothing but natural language uh, understanding framework. Right? Uh, then you have a RASA 
dialogue or a rasa core which actually moderates the entire dialogue it will look little uh, uh, complex to begin with but let me simplify it for you see for example any bot uh, if you have to keep typing all possible expression for an intent for example when i say greeting is an intent the simplest of it right you cannot keep typing saying that hello hi how are you all this belongs to greetings there might be n number of such expressions if you have to manually type every one of them then it is as good as writing a if condition or a, a series of if saying that if any if your input matches any one of this then fire it uh, then there is no, no need of artificial intelligence over here right so the machine should be able to take few examples from you say you might have given 10 or 15 examples and then when a user type something different than what you have already given the machine should be able to interpret and say yeah looks like this is a greeting intent right and this is a thank you intent so that is how a machine understands it learns that, that's the very fundamental of machine learning and then it keeps adding it to the vocabulary correct so that nlu is natural language understanding uh, uh, component of rasa framework exactly does that and the second thing which i talked about is uh, rasa core or the dialogue where it moderates the entire thing for example we might uh, we would have, we just saw a use case in our previous uh, session wherein we, the user started with a greeting intent then he said like okay i want to inquire about my order he gave you the order number then once uh, the bot responded saying that okay your order is on track for so and so date on delivery then he thanked it it's an ideal case but not always uh, a user might follow this structure wherein he will greet he will give you the information and then uh, once you have re responded back thank you uh, thank the bot but there might be user who are in a hurry who will just come and say i want to know this order suddenly the it shouldn't collapse it should understand that okay this guy has skipped the uh, greeting intent he has come directly to the inquiry intent some people may just come and say goodbye but probably they don't want to even chat with the bot or they might just even close it and go so uh, the in in practical world it can be in any shape and any form so but a bot should be robust enough in moderating it saying that okay i understand this is the intent now how do i respond to it it can be in any order right so that part is taken care of by the rasa code so let me uh, uh, reiterate rasa framework has two components two major components one is rasa nlu and number two is rasa dialog rasa nlu what it tries to do is whenever you are typing something it will understand what intent it belongs to right you would have already seen this in different ways when you go to google and type something it will try to show you some of the possible queries which you are trying to ask and if you are a technical programmer and you have used stack flow if you want to type a question it will show you a similar questions already that is basically your as a natural language understanding the other component you just talking about is rasa dialogue which tries to understand or the rasa core it tries to moderate the entire dialogue flow saying that okay this is a greeting intent so how do i respond this is a inquiry intent so how do i respond not all intents have a static response by that what i mean is when i say hi a static response can be hello but when i say uh, when i ask you what is the weather in chennai today that is not a very static response because it may vary today it may vary tomorrow and it may vary with the place uh, one person can ask about chennai one person can ask about berlin one person can ask about tokyo so here it is a dynamic response so the bot should be in a position to understand one this is an inquiry number two there are entities in it three now we i need to invoke an api at the back end get that information and provide back to the user so this entire moderation is done by the rasa core right so what we will do is uh, let's approach it in a most simplistic way uh, in three phases or three simple steps step 1 we will set up an environment this environment will be used going forward for all our practice sessions uh, num uh, number 2 we will start with nlu alone 
and then we will have a follow up video where, where we will deal with uh, rasa core or the uh, dialog flow basically right uh, the environment setup i wanted to make it as simple as possible so we have created a batch file which has all the packages uh, or i will say 80% of the packages to be uh, very fair you can just install it and as as i was telling you this is one of this is one of the disadvantages of getting on to uh, doing everything from the scratch or following this type of a framework because you have to set up the environment you need to do a little bit of coding not always uh, writing a logic probably invoking a class and doing it and the third biggest disadvantage which i have seen is sir this framework keeps evolving and certain times they don't do a <clears throat> the features are not backward compatible so what do i mean by it is you might have written a code or you might be writing a code today it will be working well but there is no guarantee that it may work well next year as well not always but so say 50% of the time because this framework keeps evolving so you need to go in and figure out okay this particular feature is depreciated there is much easier way to do it and replace those classes uh one good point is the rasa framework has a very good community help so if you are part of it they do have a monthly newsletter wherein they keep informing you that what is getting changed and uh, apart from it i have always seen in my practical experience if you log a query in a github or in a rasa forum less than 24 hours you do get <clears throat> very good support so i will not call it as a major disadvantage because what i have seen is uh compared to last year to this year they have even removed the need of certain python programs but rather they have given you a simple interface wherein you can do the interactive training and other things uh, which we will deal anyhow as part of our sessions <clears throat> in a much easier and flexible way and as i said uh, uh, one either you can keep following those frameworks to understand what is getting changed or always you can post a query and get it and as i said even uh, you can post it to my id query shami at gmail.com i'll be more than glad to help you and all the codes uh, including the installation batch file which i am referring here will be is available in the github uh, feel free to download it and uh, start practicing it thank you hi friends in the next few minutes what we are going to see is uh, the rasa nlu component of it as i said uh, first time we need to set up the environment not that difficult task and this is not going to be a repetitive task for each of the sessions but probably we will do an incremental uh, changes to it so uh, to make this job easier i have uh, created a, a batch file called installation so probably we can just uh, use a pip command pip command is nothing but a python package manager which will do everything for you so you have to just uh, do a pip command and it will take care of the rest right and i am also going to walk you through how to install the anaconda part of it and some of the node js component uh, these are all little bit <clears throat> uh, easier because it is all uh, gui oriented right so let's talk about it and one of the cases which i have taken uh, for our example is uh, one from uh, justina <coughs> she is in the rasa forum and a rasa moderator uh, the reason why i took this case is it had a it was very simple in nature it didn't have too many intents so it was all about inquiring the weather uh, wherein you will have a great intent wherein you will say that okay hi how are you and then a inform intent wherein the user will say i want to know the weather in any uh, you, you can specify any location which you want the final is the by uh, goodbye intent so <clears throat> this was the simplest of the cases uh, the other two candidates which i was considering is one is the book which i was referring to building a chatbot with python there was a good example on a restaurant bot and also an horoscope bot wherein you ask for a you provide a sunshine and uh, or provide a date of birth and it will give you your today's horoscope in all these cases whether it is fetching the horoscope or the weather there are apis you just need to invoke the api so that is the only business logic which we need to write 
the other things are being taken care by the framework so it's as good as let me give you a metaphor it will be easier to understand um so you go to a restaurant <coughs> suddenly you see a new dish which you've never heard about what we normally do is we call the uh, waiter and ask him what it is and he says some description of it and then we go ahead and order it or we say no we don't need it just like that uh, this frameworks they do evolve and they come up with a lot of uh, classes and methods you need not worry about how it is implemented what it does you need to just know uh, how to invoke it what are the parameters you need to supply so i want to keep it as simple as possible so that the only the business logic part of it is something which you need to think so you need to do a in our case you need to know the weather of any location in the world there is a site apixu which i will be providing you you have to log in using your google id or facebook id it will give you a key if you just feed in that key and provide the location name it will get you the weather and all you need to do is pass the information and uh, put it on the the display console whether it is a website or in your uh, simple uh, system display doesn't matter right so I, i want to keep the technical portion simpler and easier so that you can focus on the business part of it you remember in the very first session we did talk about it saying that designing a bot is all about 60% user experience and 40% is technology and in fact in reality it is less than 40% okay uh let's get straight into it so getting on to the screens if you realistically see um the first thing which you'll do is go to the anaconda.com distribution uh depending on which system you have windows or mac or linux you can install this is absolutely free uh, and i will recommend for beginners to go with anaconda rather than installing python and having an editor and doing things on your own this package will take care of most of our things and in fact it has lot of other packages as we go into further sessions on machine learning this numpy matlab everything will be more useful to us okay so whichever system you are in go ahead click it it will auto guide you install anaconda with the python package will come along with it it will ask you which version i will say python 3.7 is the much better one it has all the new features so go ahead with it then the next thing you need to do is go to the site npmjs.com get npm this is something which i am going to uh, tell you uh, during the rasa nlu part of it which is more interactive so you have to download your node js and npm component here uh, even without this we can do the uh, we can uh, go ahead and do the rasa nlu but you need to write a json on your own but if you install this it is a gui which will do the creation of json building for you at the back end so you are uh, you need not worry about syntax remember our philosophy is keeping the coding as simple and as minimal as possible that's the reason between uh, for this right once you have done uh, this is how your anaconda will look like go ahead and launch the jupyter notepad once you launch it you will get it here uh you'll get an empty screen here this is uh, all this code which i'm showing you here is available in my github and the link is provided uh, as part of this video if you still have queries you can always uh, let me know with the error log or with the exact nature of the query so that within a week i'll try to answer you right so now we are going to create a weather bot so what i have done is i have taken the code from uh, justina's uh, github but at the same time i have done lot of updates because if you remember this framework keeps evolving so what we had a year back doesn't work now so i have updated all the features the updated code is available to you so create a folder called weatherbot so i have created that here right so you will have a empty screen so i have created a weatherbot don't worry about all the internal components just create a folder called weatherbot and then go here to show you a terminal get on to your terminal pwd in back uh, next it talks about the working directory so get a bot get in here then go ahead and install all the packages so you see the weather bot i have a package for you called installation.txt it has all the 
packages which you need not only for this exercise but for more okay so go here and see pip which is a python package manager now in fact we have pip 3 version and say install the batch file and in this case installation.txt and hit enter so it will take some time because it is going to install so many packages for you i'm not doing it because i have already done that and probably it will update if i do that right once this is done once you have installed it if you have errors do let me know probably there might be a typo we can get it uh, fixed then the next thing is you have already installed uh, you have already i believe you would have downloaded this node.js and npm part of it you need to install it so install uh, or i can say you don't need to do that npm global as a you trainer right and hit enter it will install the downloaded packages for you so now you have both now what we are going to do so you have created a simple environment with an anaconda package with the python version and you have installed the node.js component to it but you're wondering what are we going to do as i said uh, this bot is all about three intents right the greet intent the inform intent and uh, thank you or a buy intent that's it right so all you have to do is you have to inform you have to create a model so you have to create a model and make it aware that these are the three intents i have and under each intent these are the expressions so going back to our very first session on dialogue flow we just said hi it's a great intent how are you it's a great intent there you just entered in the gui but here you need to do it in, you can do it in two different ways one is the hard way called json wherein you have to create a json file where to say this is the intent name these are the expressions possible in it or you can do it using the gui way i will show you both i will say start with the json just create a simple json so that you get a hang of it but then you go to the gui part and uh, keep entering as many intents and entities you want and then if you go and see the json file at the back end it would have uh, auto filled or auto populated it from the gui so let's do both so what i do is uh, in whether you have created a folder called weather bot just create another folder called data within data <coughs> i have a json file called data.json so you need not do all these things so in rust so i nl you data i'm going to say text is hello intent is greet that's it or text is goodbye intent is also goodbye <coughs> and here i have another intent saying what is the weather in berlin at the moment you can have anything so this is an inform intent and the entity is location the value here it is berlin don't worry about the start and end it actually specifies where it is actually starts and where it ends in the whole statement but all these things can be done so one day is if you don't want to use a gui you can keep adding more and more expressions like this but i know that if this is not user friendly and this is not the how you want to do that's the reason just have one or two intents so even this is enough and once you have done with it you have already uh, go to your terminal and say that's uh the new it will create it will open up a gui for you wherein you can just type in okay i just a mistake so i have to go to the data file sorry for that so the print working directory is here so it's really robot this is cd data now what is the working directory yes now we are in the right directory source data dot json okay. and a typo there now it opens up 
trainer for you. It pulls up all the intents which you have already typed in the JSON file. If you have just one, it will show you one. Then if you want to add a new example, you can do it. Say, I'm going to say, uh, let's say, what's the weather? And uh, let's give a name, Andama. Right? Now the intent is informed. And Andaman is the entity, and similar to the dialog flow, you have to just highlight it. It will say, Can I add it? And then say it is a location entity. You can type anything, yeah, it will bring it up. Then you say add. And you go ahead and put a save here. And now you go back to the data JSON and come all the way down. Here you will see that all this are there uh, which we have already created. So the last one should be uh, whatever we typed in now, just now, right? Let's see. Yeah, see? What's the weather in another Now it has auto populated this for you. So we have not done anything, we have just created an environment, we created a JSON file. There are two ways of doing it, either you do it manually or you can optionally make use of Rasa MLU Trainer and enter as many uh, entities you need, uh, sorry, uh, as many intents or expressions for an intent you need and keep adding your entity there and it will auto populate the JSON file. Now you have done with it. Now what you need to do is there are inbuilt machine learning models. This machine learning model should be fed with this data file saying that, okay, you know what? My bot will have only three intent and these are the possible data. Now you learn from this. So if a user is going to type something new, which is not there in the data file, you need to still be able to classify which intent it belongs to, right? Uh, that is what our Rasa NLU does. So Rasa NLU does, it predicts which intent it belongs to and then it also extracts the entity part of it. That is the only thing which it does. Now, uh, the way it can be done, I'll tell you a very simplistic way called bag of words. So I'm just going to deviate a little bit from the board and explain you in the most simplistic way on the bag of words algorithm. Uh, it doesn't mean that you need to know this for creating a board, but having this knowledge will help you to understand the working model of it and bag of words itself will need a session so i'm going to keep it pretty simple so let me pull out a word document here so i have three documents here document one says i love apple document two says apple a day keeps doctor away document three says sachin is called a god of cricket now you may be wondering if this is a statement why am why am i calling this document right uh, it can be even a book. The entire book can be in one document. For simplicity's sake, I'm just making one statement as one document. It can be your entire PDF. What bag of word does is, it as the word describes bag of words, it takes the document, puts all the words in a uh, jumble it and put it in a bag, right? Uh, whatever data structure you call it as. So in this case, I have just typed it. I love Apple. I have not typed Apple twice because it's already appearing once. A day keeps a doctor away. Sachin is called God of Cricket. Now you have a bag of words. And if I'm not wrong, there are 14 words in there. So now this particular document, which is B1, can be converted into a vector. The vector which will have 14 entities or 14 elements in it. And wherever that particular word is appearing in the document, I will have a one. Wherever it is not, I will say zero. For example, I is there, so one. Love is there, one. Apple is there, one. A is not there, so zero. So I just create a vector like this. Now a document, which is Q text, is converted into a vector. I can do it for D2, I can do it for D3, right? Now once you have converted a text into a vector, uh, going back to our H standard algebra, you have something called Euclidean distance between two-dimensional and three-dimensional variables. 
uh, we here we just to the two dimensional one and this is the formula so using this formula we can calculate the distance between these two vector and you can see how close they are so common sense tells me if i take this three statement i will say d1 and d2 are more closer because it talks something about an apple but d1 and d3 or d2 and d3 are entirely different because uh, this is not directly related d3 talks about sachin and cricket uh, d1 and d2 talks more about apple and their individual likes right so if you give me this three and say which are more closer i will say d1 and d2 are closer and how to do it mathematically this is the way now if you are thinking that oh there's so much of work which i need to do the good point is you may not do all this python has done it for you it has a feature called uh, it has a function called similarity uh, which is available in a module called spacey spacey is more of your text mining uh, package it has such an ability that it can understand the geolocation it can understand the company name it can understand a lot of things which we use in a common day-to-day -day, uh, life right so that has all this simple function which will calculate the Euclidean distance and will just tell you which are similar or not and in fact uh, if you go to the github um, going back to my case I do have a example which you want if you want you can try it out this is uh, basically let me open this uh, not this so, So I'm going to put in some examples over here. It will be easier for you to go through this. Uh, wherein, uh, yes, here. So an apple a day keeps the same example I've taken. Here you type anything you want and you'll be able to see how much similar they are. You need not worry about the speed and distance or any factor. In fact, I will upload this code as well. Uh, where I make use of spacey. This is more for you to uh, try the different features which are available here. Okay. Now, why I was telling you all this is that you need to understand how this Rasa NLU operates. So, Rasa NLU can include two types of packages. One is the bag of words, and then remember I have oversimplified it for you because in a strict bag of words, it removes all the fillers. It, uh, even if you have a different verb, it goes back to a, a common originating lemma, which we call as the stimming uh, process. I don't want to complicate it too much because bag of words algorithm itself will take an entire session. But remember, bag of words is all as converting a text into a vector and finding out the similarities. It in fact makes use of an algorithm called KNN and CNN algorithm it will group it together saying that all these are similar so anything coming in which part it belongs to that is the algorithm which you see when you type something in google it shows you more relevant topics depending on your profile as well so if a space uh, physicist is going to type something on uh, uh, black hole and uh, uh, eight standard eighth grade person uh, student is going to type on a black hole the results are not going to be the same because the profiling is different. We know that he's a physicist, he knows the definition of it, probably he's looking for some scholarly articles. But uh, let's not too much digress into it, but just understand there is an algorithm called back of words, which does most of the things for you, which comes as part of spacing. Uh, there are disadvantages of back of words as well, because more the words, the greater the vector length, the more the computation it requires, and because most of them have zeros, that means that the space it will occupy during a computation is also high. Uh, but all those are uh, technical constraints. But what I see as a functional constraint there is, if you misspell a word, then probably it will not autocorrect, it will have a difficulty. If you have a foreign language included, uh, it has its own difficulty. The third thing is, if you are too domain specific, if you are going to use a word which is exclusively used only in your domain, 
Spacey will not give you the right result. So in such cases, TensorFlow is the right package. But for all practical purposes, we can make use of Spacey. But TensorFlow is gaining a lot of popularity. In fact, there's a white paper on it. Uh, I will recommend you when you get time to go through it. But again, these are all for academic interest to understand the model better. It is not absolutely required to do a bot. Okay. Now, you went into the weather bot. Let's come back to it, right? So you went into the weather bot. You created a data. And JSON is there, right? So you still see we invoked and the server is listening here. So you can keep adding as much as you want and the JSON will be populated. Now what I do is, I also have to do one more thing. Uh, I have to create a configuration file called config spacey. It has only three parameters, as simple as that. I'm going to say, make use of spacey uh, algorithm to train the model. And as, as you said, you can either use spacey or TensorFlow, but for this example, where you have limited number of data, it's not in uh, thousands, I go with spacey the path where the output model should be stored, I have kept it here. The data, where our input data is available, I have kept it here. So it is again parameters. This is my input data. This is where your model should be placed. And this is the algorithms which you need to use. Uh, that's it. You, are, you have not written any business logic. And this remains the same whether it is a very complicated bot or a simple bot. Probably this package may change, the pipeline may change. You might put a tensor flow, but again, it's purely dependent on you, right? After that, I have written a program called NLV model. So you can open that. Uh, I think I did open NLV. Yes. Here I import a bunch of packages. And what I do here is I just say that, okay, then here is my data. Take it and train it. So this is the important line saying that just train my data and create a model called weatherbot. So what it will do is it will take the spacey algorithm and the data for dot JSON which you wrote and say that okay there are three intents to it and these are the examples which they are given to classify an intent and so anything which comes very similar to it you have to classify in this form and if you want to train it or you want to know whether it is really working uh, what I will suggest is I have given a simple line I am planning my holiday in Chennai I wonder what's the weather out there. Just type something which is not there in your data or JSON. If you are going to type the same line, then it becomes like a if condition, right? Already you are given, you want to see the result. Type something different than that, but uh, wherein you know which intent it exactly belongs to. If I type here, I am, I am done, thank you, goodbye, then it becomes a goodbye intent. Here I am actually asking about an inform intent. Now, when you run this, what really happens? Let's see. I'm just running it. So you have to hit a run button here. Now when the model runs, which is taking some time because of all these imports, let's see the output. It, the model will say this is an inform intent because it will give you a different confidence limit. Saying that, okay, it cannot be. A, yes, it is coming. Let me show you what is output. Yep. It says it's an inform intent because the confidence level for an inform intent is 0.76 whereas the confidence limit for a greet intent the, for the line which you have given the statement which you have given is only 0.18 and the confidence for a buy intent goodbye intent is 0 0.05 so out of which 0.76 stands high so the model itself says whatever line you have typed is belongs to the inform intent not only that it has already created a json for you it says from 28 to 35, the value Chennai is the location. And all this is done, uh, Spacey does it for you. So you need not worry about it, but now it has successfully predicted. It has predicted saying, uh, saying that whenever you type something, whether it works according to your expectation. And remember, the most important part here is not this uh, python program because here you didn't write any business logic you just fed in the data part uh, what is important is the data which you provide if you say goodbye as a greeting intent the machine will take goodbye as a greeting intent then your bot will not actually function rightly so focus on the data part more the data more the qualitative data the model will be more and more robust so in the later part of the session, we will see how to even train 
the model with the data which is getting which it collects during the interaction with the user so if i have 1000 interaction in a day can i take in and feed it back to the model especially for those areas where it couldn't handle where it has to go back to the fallback intent where it was not able to answer it on its own and by the way if you are going to ask me where is the fallback intent we never typed one uh, that is inbuilt in the rasa framework so that if you type something different it itself will ask you i couldn't understand that what it is in a different forms right so i don't want to put too many things on the same day so what we have done today is very very simple you have created a data.json and that too you did it with the gui and then you had an inbuilt function called train you wherein you provided three parameters uh, what models you have to use? We made use of Spacey and I explained you the backup words and then where the model output should be stored and what data should be used. Absolutely fine. And then we'll give some training examples to show you the confidence limit. If you think it is wrong, then the problem you need to go and fix back in your data. There is nothing wrong in the logic because the logic just takes your data, trains the model, and makes it more and more robust. I believe. Uh, there's a lot of information for it uh, for today try, uh, try this out i know that in installation you might hit a, a road uh, roadblock or you might have some gaps here do let me know i'll be able to help you or you can go directly to the rasa form and post your query you'll get a support there in fact i'm part of the panel over there so in fact if you post something i will do i do you'll get a, a email notification about uh, the queries so try it out. Let's make our hands dirty. Thank you. Bye.